Hey, welcome to a new episode of Alive. My name is Sarah Zavik, and I'm going to be taking you through a kin stretch mini mobility session focusing on the upper part of the body. Now, with mobility, what we're looking to do is enhance the quality of the tissues around our joints. We're maximizing our strength control as well as enhancing and expanding our movement where necessary. So for today's training session, like I mentioned, we'll be doing the upper half of the body. And let's go ahead and get started. So come up to a tall kneeling position. If you can, have your toes tucked under. Make two tight fists like you're holding on to two tennis balls really firmly. Squeeze your legs, squeeze your butt. And from here, we're going to start warming up our neck. So bring your chin down towards the chest. Rotate your head to the left. Side bend your ear towards the left and extend, lift your chin up and over. Side bend over towards the right, rotate towards the right, come down through center, pause here. Check that the rest of the body here is not moving as you change direction, go to the right. Side bend towards the right. Extend, lift the chin up and over. Side bend towards your left, rotate left, come down through the center into flexion, and then return to center. From here, if you happen to have some kind of prop or something that you can squeeze onto, grab that, a cushion, a yoga block, anything you got. And from here, hold on really tight. Now we're focusing on the thoracic spine, the upper part of the body. So from the pelvis down, nothing is moving, your statue. Slowly start to round the upper and the middle part of your back. Start to rotate from here to your left. Side bend towards the left. Extend, lift the chest up and over. Side bend towards your right. Rotate towards your right. Come down through the center, pause here, and switch directions. Rotate right. Side bend right. Extend, lift the chest up and over. To your left side bend. Rotate left. Come down through flexion, and then slowly lift up and release. Cool. From here, come into a tabletop position, all fours. Spread your fingers, press your palms firmly down. Come into a fully flexed spine, so round your back like an angry cat. And start from the pelvis down or from the navel down, really. Start to extend the spine, one vertebra at a time. Doing your best to move slowly, encouraging as much motion as you can between each of the vertebra. Once you find your full extension, pause here. Start from the navel down and start to round the lower back, middle back, upper back. Come into that cat-like position. And we'll do this one more time. So slowly extend from the navel down, kind of extending the, the pelvis up and back, walking your way vertebra by vertebra until you find the cow pose position. And then start from the navel down, round, lower back, middle back, upper back. Find that angry cat-like shape. Good. From here, we'll come into a sideline position. With um, Just for time's sake, we'll just be filming one side of the body. So the idea is that at the end of this, you can rinse and repeat to do the same thing on the other side. So lie down onto one side. Press your forearm firmly down. Take your opposite arm out to the side and make a tight fist with your thumb up like you're hitchhiking. From here, take your arm forward across the body, rotate your thumb up and out towards the side so your elbow is starting to face up, the inner part of your elbow. Then take your arm up towards the line of your ear, keep pushing down through your bottom forearm so you're not sagging into the shoulder. Once you hit this little roadblock, the arm up towards the line of your ear, from here begin to rotate, turn your thumb down, Sweep your arm back behind you. Keep pulling up and back behind you in towards the midline. And try not to touch your spine as you bend your elbow and your hand will gravitate towards the lower part of the back. From here, re-extend, so straighten the arm. Take your arm up and over, keeping the rest of the body strong and statue-like so that we're getting as much movement as we can into our shoulder. From here, we'll do this one more time. So sweep your arm across the body, lift up towards the line of your ear. Once you hit this roadblock, rotate the thumb down. Sweep your arm back behind you. Keep pulling in and up, bend the elbow, and land your hand to your lower part of your back. From here, lift yourself up onto your side. You can spread the legs open a little bit. 
And with this shoulder in uh, what's called an internally rotated position behind the body, from here, work the scapula. So lift your shoulder up towards your ear. Start to draw the shoulder forward in front, down away from the ear, and then draw back behind you and do that one more time in this forward direction, trying to maximize the movement of what your scapula can do independently. And then switch directions. Because the arm is in this biased, internally rotated position, it might feel really challenging, which is not unusual to work this scapular rotation, this movement. And in general, the exercises that we're going to be doing today is focusing just on specific joints. So we can enhance the quality of control strength for each of these joints. So when you do things that require the joints in um, other exercises, yoga, or the, any of the train sessions, that they can work to the best of their ability. So from here, with the arm back behind you, you're gonna keep your body a statue-like position. You'll start to feel a little bit of a stretch into the front of the chest. And this is where we're going to start working into our end range strengthening exercises. So with your hand behind you, you're going to start pushing your hand forward and your spine is going to resist. So you're going to start feeling a gradual contraction of the tissues here in the front of your chest. Slowly start to ramp up that contraction until you find your safest, greatest amount of effort. You're trying to push your hand through your body and hold that effort as you hold here for five. Keep driving your hand through your body, four. Feeling the contraction through the front of your chest, three. Two, one, from here, pull the hand back and away from your spine. You're gonna feel the stuff in the back of your shoulder, near the shoulder blade and through the outer part of the shoulder, start to light up and contract. Hold that for five, four, three, two, one, slowly bend the elbow a little bit more and see if you can creep your hand up just a little bit higher. All right. We're going to do this one more time. This exercise is called pails and rails. It's talking about the tissue here that's in the lengthened position that you contract first. And then the rails is what you contract second when you try and pull the hand back and away from you. So I'll show you from this other position so you can see what we're working with from here. And so from here, start to drive your hand forward into your spine. Your spine is resisting. So you feel the contraction into the front of your chest. Gradually ramp up that contraction until you find your safest, greatest amount of effort and hold there for five, four, three, two, one. Rails contraction, switch direction. Try and pull the hand off of your spine and hold. Keep pulling up and back, up and back for five, Four, three, two, one. See if you can creep the hand up just a little bit higher. Whew. And then relax. Nice. Staying in this upright position, take your hand up and away from your spine. Begin to straighten the arm back behind you. With your thumb pointing up, start to reach your arm up and over towards the line of your ear. And then take your arm across the body and down towards the floor. Return, take the arm across the body, lift the arm up towards the line of your ear. From here, rotate your thumb down towards the floor, sweep the hand behind your back, and now try not to touch your spine as you bend the elbow. How high can you go? And again, pull the hand away from the body, straighten the arm out, rotate from the root of your arm bone, arm up towards the line of your ear. Take the arm across the body, and then from here, use your opposite hand to assist your shoulder into shoulder adduction. So it's not from here that you're laying the scapula slide forward along for the ride. So draw the shoulder back slightly so that you start to feel a stretch into the outer part of your shoulder and breathe. Smooth breath in, long breath out. We're going to work those same exercises, pails and rails. Pails standing for the progressive angular isometric loading, which is just contracting the tissue here on stretch on the outer part of the shoulder. The rails is the regressive angular isometric loading, which is contracting the stuff in the inner part of your chest here. So slowly from here, prepare. Start to drive your arm out into your hand. 
Your hand is blocking. So you're not actually moving anywhere, but you're still feeling the stuff on the outer part of your shoulder start to light up a lot. Find your safest, greatest amount of effort and hold there for five. Keep driving the arm out for four, three, two, one, rails contraction, release the su passive support, and keep your arms straight. Try and pull more across the body without letting the scapula move, so draw the shoulder blade back. Pull in towards your opposite shoulder for three, two, one, and replace the passive support. Relax. Breath in. Breath out. <sighs> This is tricky. We're going to do one more of this exercise. So from here, take a breath in. Slowly start to drive the arm out away from you. It's like you're trying to go from this adducted position, you're trying to drive the arm out to the side. Feel the gradual contraction on the outer part of your shoulder here for five. Hold it for four, three, two, one. Release the support and hold, five. Keep driving in more, four, three, two, one, and reset. Use your hand to draw you in maybe a little bit more. Ooh, and breathe in between. It's not unusual after doing that really intense contraction from the pails and the rails exercise that it feels like you get a little bit more range of motion. From here, release your opposite hand down. Come again over into that sideline position. Thumb is up again like you're hitchhiking. Take your arm up towards the line of your ear. Pull the ribs down. Rotate the thumb, the arm back behind you. Try not to touch the spine as you bend the elbow. Try not to land. And then pull up and back. Rotate the arm. Take it across the body and lift yourself back up. Arm will come out to the side. The thumb is facing up and then rotate the thumb down towards the floor. Externally rotate, thumb up and maybe back a little bit, keep the ribs hugging down. And then internally rotate, turn your thumb down and back a little bit without the shoulder blade sliding forward. Do this a couple more times. Externally rotate the eye of your elbow up. Internally rotate from the root of your arm, bicep down. Couple more times, up and down. Last one, I have the elbow up, rotate the bicep down, Whew. and then go ahead and release. Feel how that shoulder is now. All right, from here, if you have some kind of like stick thing, I'm using a handy permanent marker, something that's not going to break, hopefully, when we do this next exercise, which is going to be focusing on our elbow. So now glue the same arm that you've been working with, glue the upper arm into your rib cage so it's not moving. We don't need our little stick for now. We're going to be working into the cards of what the elbow can do, the controlled articular rotations. From here, start to bend, flex the elbow, and see if you can rotate your palm a little bit more out to the side. And then rotate your palm forward or pronate and extend the arm. Supinate the forearm, the palm up, and flex. Pronate, or turn the palm forward, and extend. Again, supinate and flex. Pronate and extend. From here, you're gonna grab hold of your little stick thing, whatever you have here. And keeping the upper arm glued into your rib cage, now we're just going to simply work that rotation, the pronation and supination. So rotate the forearm, the palm up, and then rotate the forearm and the palm down. And do this a couple of times. Rotate up and rotate down. The next time here that you rotate down or come into pronation, you're gonna use your opposite hand to press the stick that you're holding onto slightly down. Try not to let the shoulder come forward with you. So we're working into that same exercise of pails and rails for pronation of the elbow. Slowly from here, you're gonna ramp up the contraction of the tissue you feel stretching on the outer part of the arm by driving the stick up into your hand that's blocking. So slowly, gradually try and rotate. You're going from pronation, you're trying to supinate until you find your safest, greatest amount of effort. You can really start to see my biceps bulging doing this. As we hold here, your safest, greatest effort for five. Keep driving up four, 
three, two, one, switch direction, take your hand underneath, and now try and rotate, or um, I should say pronate more down towards the floor. Seeing if you can rotate from your elbow, press that stick down into your hand for five, four, three, two, one, and relax. Take your hand on top of your stick again, keeping your arm glued to your rib cage, and see if you can find a little bit more pronation. This will be really helpful for people if you're doing things or working on um, pull-ups, for example, or if you're doing any kind of overhead weightlifting, that will be really helpful. That kind of rotation is necessary in your elbow. We're done with that for now. Just take that same arm from here, glue the bicep into your rib cage, flex, pronate, and extend, supinate, and flex, pronate, extend. Good. From here, use your hand, hold on to that same wrist, and without letting the, the arm turn, so now we're not doing any kind of movement from the elbow, now we're just going to focus on your wrist. So from here, drive your fingertips down towards the floor, trying to gain as much extension of the wrist as possible. And then sweep your pinky finger in towards the middle. Bring your fingertips up towards the sky. Try and keep a flat palm. And you're trying to flex the wrist, bringing the palm in towards your form as much as possible. And then push the thumb out to the side. And do that two more times. Down, in, up, and out. Down, in, up, and out. And now switch directions. Go a few reps the opposite way and try and make the circle even bigger each time that you do it. Good. Go ahead and release. Whew. You've done one arm, now it's your time to rinse, repeat, and do the other side. So thank you so much for joining for this session. Please check out the other sessions that we have available, and we'll see you next time.